A letter came into my advice column recently from a guy, and he asked a question that I thought would be very interesting to answer, not only on the blog, but also to make a video, because the information that I'm about to share, I think is very important, and it seems like uh, more people will watch videos than will read articles, so <clears throat> I'm going to take both approaches. So anyway, here's his question. I've been with my girlfriend for three years. Unfortunately, she does not like sex. I can never get enough, and I'm lucky if we make love once a month. She wasn't like that before. I'm starting to get really pissed because it seems like she's using sex as a weapon against me. What should I do? Signed, not getting enough action. And, you know, this is a common complaint. Because a lot of guys feel like if they're in a relationship and a woman turns away from them, that she's playing a game. That somehow it's, it's a personal attack on him. That she's just trying to control him. She's trying to manipulate him. You know, he makes it all about himself. So what I wanted to do was educate these fools so that you could understand there's 25 really solid reasons why women don't want to screw you and 24 of them are your fault okay so let's go to, let's you know we're gonna start going through these now first I want to say this I forgot I'm gonna say this first um, you know I, I don't know the age of this couple you know that's one thing he left out he, he the letter was exactly like I read to you no more no less so I don't know the age of these people because, you know, there could be some, you know, there could be a medical reason why she's lost interest in sex, a thyroid problem, uh, fibroids maybe or something, um, you know, some hormonal shift, maybe early uh, menopause. I don't know the answer there, but I do want to say that, you know, um, it is as natural as we mature for our sexual desire to start to dip. Unfortunately, uh, you know, it used to be pretty much the same for men and women, but with the advent of Viagra and Cialis and all this old stuff, it's changed game for older couples. I remember when Viagra first hit the market, um, there were a lot of divorces amongst older couples because the men, you know, they could now pop a pill and do stuff that they hadn't been able to do in 10 years. So they got all excited and started cheating on their wives and it just caused a big mess, ruined a whole bunch of families because, you know, men are just too focused on that little piece of equipment. So, um, you know, like I said, there may be some medical reasons or what we could have, and this is the most likely case, it's not that she has no interest in sex. She doesn't have interest in sex with you. And that is the issue. So let's start through this list. What I'm going to do, I don't really have them in any, you know, sensible kind of order, really. Um, just the last one, which is actually number one. So what I'm going to do is go through them in reverse order, starting with the one that I have last. Which, like I said, except for the one, number one, they aren't in really any order. The other 24 aren't in really in any order. But I'm going to go through them in the way I wrote them down. Okay, number 25. You are judgmental about female sexuality. I think a lot of men don't understand how important it is to basically shut their damn mouth and let a woman just do her thing. You know, you're... The, the teachings that women get from society and religion and families about their sexuality is usually very negative, condemning, and um, it's just it's not encouraging of, of a woman to explore that side of herself. So if she has reached a point of maturity and uh, comfort comfort is that comfortable with herself that she's ready to explore her fantasies or you know some different little things that she thinks about or would like to try you need to shut up and let her do it and encourage her instead of condemning her and calling her names 
Like, guys will say, well, you know, she just, I don't know where she learned that shit at. You know, where she get that from? She must be cheating. You know, that's some shit only a slut would do. A whore, a cunt, a hoe, a nasty bitch. You know, that kind of stuff. So if she knows that you think like that, do you really think that you're going to get the most out of this woman in the bedroom? It's not going to happen. So either you need to learn how to just accept that your woman has a, a sexual side just like you do. Or you need to, I don't know what you need to do, really just jump off a cliff or something. Because it's not fair to her to have to limit her exploration of her sexuality to stay in a relationship with you just because you are not comfortable with her being outside of whatever these stereotypes you have in your head about female sexuality. It's very unfortunate because... You know, with the guy who can encourage his woman to explore her fantasies and the stuff that she's curious about and whatever desires, he's going to get the full energy of her sexuality. He will just be like grinning 24-7. But unfortunately, it just seems like most men care more about their egos and having control than they do on enjoying their woman's sexual side. So that's number 25. Okay, let's move on. 24. You have a bad case of what we I call a sleepy pee-pee, <laughs> otherwise known as erectile dysfunction. Now, basically, you know, sometimes people can't help it because they have, you know, a medication issue or um, some kind of health issue that, you know, has caused that. Unfortunately, though, in most of the cases, the health issue, you brought that on yourself from living raggedy in your youth you know you ate too much junk food you ate greasy meat you didn't exercise you drank too much liquor you smoked you did drugs you did all kind of shit to tear up your body and now the fly the fine blood vessels in your penis don't work that's your fault but then you get into a situation now you and this woman right and you want to have sex with her well you know, that means she got to put in all kind of work to make you get a half hard dick. And, you know, this, who want to spend 45 minutes fumbling around with your lip dick? I mean, really? So, I mean, she might do it sometimes, but you want more sex. It, I'm just telling you, that's going to have an impact on her desire to have sex with you. It's going to be too much fucking work. I mean, if she worked all week, she cleaned the house, she shopped, she cooked, she put the food away. You know, she, she, she had to get ready for work the next day. I mean, she might have brought some work home with her for all we know. So she's tired and she doesn't want to spend 45 minutes fucking around with you and your limp dick. Okay? So you need to do something about that. Change your diet. Start to hit a gym or something. Number 23, you are of what I call a minute man. You from the opposite end of the spectrum. Now, you have a premature ejaculation problem. Some of you have retarded ejaculation and you can't come. But either way, you create problems for your woman in the bedroom. So now with the premature ejaculation, which is the point of the minute man, you know, it's like... It's, it doesn't last long enough for her to really get into it or get any real enjoyment out of it. So most of the time she's going to be like, you know, what's the fucking point? Because it's going to be over in 90 seconds anyway. So why trip? Okay. And I mean, it's sad. I mean, I'm just trying to be real with these dudes because, you know, they y'all seem to have this fantasy about your coxmanship or something. And you think because you show up and your dick is hard and because you show up and you want some pussy that somebody's supposed to, you know, bow down and give it to you. Hey, well, I'm here to tell you there's a whole bunch of reasons why that's not going to happen. Even if you're in a relationship with a woman who loves you, you need to take all these things I'm telling you into consideration because, you know, they could negatively impact your relationship. All right, so let's move on to, let's see, I left off at 23, so now I'm on 22. You do too much drugging and too much drinking. Now, some of these things, you know, can kind of be a little stimulating if you only have them at a little bit in moderation. But if you have too much, alcohol is a depressant. You know, and depending on what kind of drugs you do, the same problem can happen. So... You know, and sometimes, it, you know, a woman's going to look at it as like, okay, if he's always high or he's always drunk and he's trying to have sex with me, does that mean that he has to be high or drunk to even feel attracted to me? He has to, like, 
you know, dull his senses so that he can have sex with me. And she, you think that's going to make her feel good? That's going to make her feel insecure and undesirable, which are the two main things you do not want a woman to feel if you want to, you know, get the best out of her sexually. Once she feels those feelings, she's going to start shutting down and backing away from you. And the back away will be not only emotional and psychological, but it will also be physical. And you would have caused that by being a drunk or a druggie. You know, and then there's other problems sometimes that come with that. She has to deal with, you know, the fact that your ass got arrested. Now you got a DUI. You got to go to court, spend all these money, this money on fines and attorneys. You totaled out the car. You got medical bills from your ass getting injured or injuring somebody else. Your license is suspended. You just need your license to work. So now you can't work. So now you got money problems. All this stuff comes because you lost control and you want to drink and drug and think that it's not going to affect your relationship with your woman. And I'm telling you, y'all need to think more because you just get out here just doing shit willy-nilly and you don't like put the pieces together. You don't look at the big picture. You just react and do stupid shit and then come crying about, you know, she, she won't sleep with me. You think? Number 21, you're not being a provider or protector and you lack ambition. This is a big one. These are dudes who talk a good game, right? And the woman, she want to be, you know, your, she's your biggest cheerleader. She in your corner. She's trying to support you. She got your back. She's doing all the stuff. She's taking on more of a load than she should to give you the flexibility to make these dreams you've been talking about come true. But you don't do it. You know, you talk some good shit, but you don't bust a grape. No, nothing actually happens. So at some point, you know, she gets tired. She's tired of carrying the load. She gets tired of waiting for you to do what you said you was going to do. And she starts to lose respect for you as a man. And if she's worried about her safety and security because you're not there protecting her and you're not there providing for her and you're not there doing what you said you were going to do that made her believe in you, then, you know, that shit will dry up anybody's pussy. I mean, like, quick. Number 20. She's disappointed in you. Now, this follows on the heels of number 21, but it goes into other areas. Like, you know, you may may, may make a bunch of promises that you don't fulfill and you leave her hanging. It could be something as simple as, I'm going to make the money to pay this bill, or I'll pick up the kids after school, and then you don't do it. She got to do it. You know, I mean, all kind of stuff, but you just disappoint her time and time again. And once again, you guys don't think about that. You don't think about how your actions will have a trickle-down effect and ultimately affect your relationship with your woman and your sex life. So, you know, you're going to leave her hanging. You think it's okay to cancel at dates at the last minute and show up late for stuff or not do stuff just because you changed your mind and didn't feel like it after you told her you was going to do it. You know, you you, you put your woman in, in a situation where she can't rely on you for anything. Your word is not your bond. That's like one of my tenets for manhood. Uh, you can watch that video, that video, the tenets of manhood, and kind of get a clue about what she's looking for. So you got a woman who feels alone and unsupported uh, by this man. Why do you think that she's going to feel all fuzzy-wuzzy and want to sleep with you? She's like looking at you like, God, you're just such a fuck up. I just can't stand you sometimes. That's what she's thinking. And all you're thinking about is your dick being hard. Okay, number 19. You're a smart guy. You work hard. You're a good provider. But your sex is whack. Okay, this is another one. You know, a woman will give it a do based on what he is on paper. You know, he's educated. He's smart. He's successful. Um, you know, he would make a great father. And he's addition to the family. He got the same religion. All that kind of stuff. However... Sometimes what happens is these kind of men come with a little dick that's just just ridiculous or they come with no bedroom skills because they are just like geeks or something that's just weird and they feel like, you know, they don't have to learn how to do read about sex or learn about sex they just show up and think you just stick it in and that's it and the woman you know is like she's trying to figure out okay you know he's providing my kids and I with this comfortable life and I do love him but you know I'm not satisfied in bed what do I do I mean the frustration builds and so this one girl says you know 
good on paper just isn't enough anymore. Sometimes you just want your back broken. <laughs> oh, I was rolling. And um, this other girl, and these are quotes. He says, I want to be at work the next day. And when he calls me, I want to blush thinking about what we did last night. And another one said, I love it when he has to help me to the bathroom because I can hardly stand up. My legs are so shaky. Okay, so see, that's the kind of sex these women are looking for. They want somebody who's like putting it down, okay? And then she'll be happy to sleep with you because she knows it's going to be some like, you know, rockets firing and all kind of fabulousness happening. But, you know, just the fact that you bring home money and have them in a big house, I mean, that's nice. But what, I mean, you know, that's not personal. That's something that you would be doing no matter who was in the house with you. You see what I mean? That's not really satisfying her in a physical sense and making her feel loved and, and desired by her man. So you guys you know, think about that. That's, this is also reflected in my video, um, why, why men, women put successful black men on Nick Noor. So you might want to check that out as well and give you a little bit more explanation about that point number 19. Okay, number 18, you have an addiction to pornography. This is also a big one and one that's not really talked about that much. But guys don't really, you know, when you get used porn too much, you become kind of desensitized to normal sexual stimulation. It makes a woman have to work too hard to get your attention and to keep it. And some of these guys have to even watch porn before or even during sex to get their dick hard or to keep it up. You know, and that's a problem. So, you know, think about how she feels and, and she, she's trying to have sex with you because she loves you and she wants to feel close to you and all this stuff. Whereas sex with you makes her feel like she could just be a blow up doll. You just basically jacking off using your porn and her body to do it. And, you know, she doesn't want to be bothered. After a while, she's going to start feeling, again, insecure and undesired. And even though she may love you, but she's going to be backing off from having sex with you because it doesn't make her feel good. It hurts her. So, you know, if you got that kind of addiction, you might want to look at some treatment uh, for that because it's going to create problems in any relationship that you have. Number 17, you lie. You lie. When you lie, you destroy trust. And if your woman's not trusting you like she used to, you know, she's going to start withdrawing emotionally and she's going to reflect that emotional withdrawal in a physical form. She's going to withdraw emotionally to protect herself from more pain because your lies cause pain. I mean, you know, if a woman loves you and she doesn't want to leave you, um, she's going to put up a shield and her heart and body are going to be put behind it. And she's going to start doubting you. You know, she once she doubts that you the things that you say she's also going to doubt that you really love her so you know the leg lock is going to happen because it's like why should she sleep with somebody who lies to her and who she doesn't trust i mean are you guys like connecting dots here you just don't fucking get it and you want to turn it around to be like oh she's using it as a weapon against me no your lying ass mouth is the weapon against you that's what the reality is you did that to yourself Okay, let's move on to number 16. You are critical and you talk too damn much. Now, some of you dudes, and I've met guys like this, I don't know why you do it. I think it's some kind of ego thing. You think that it's going to make you look like you just like cock slinging, you know, big, big daddy or something. So you want to get with the new woman and you want to start talking about the sex you had with your exes or, or even just talking about your exes, period. Nobody wants to hear that. Tell it to your buddies. They might be interested. You know, but you start talking about your ex to the new woman in a situation where she hasn't asked you, especially if you in bed or you trying to, you know, get cozy with her or something, and you bring up some other bitch. Are you crazy? You know, you, you, if, that, if you talking about some other bitch, that means you thinking about some other bitch. And how you think that makes the woman that you with and you allegedly into feel? Have you, have you lost your mind? And then you're going to get critical. You want to say some stuff that you think is funny. You know, you want to talk about her weight and poke fun at her hair or makeup or cooking or something. Uh, or you want to compare her to some other woman. 
and you think the shit is funny. It's hurting her feelings. And when she gets, you know, feels like she's being hurt by you, please explain to me why you think somebody would want to sleep with your funky ass. I mean, really? You, you guys, you need to shut up. Men really need to learn to shut up more. Y'all talk too much. Number 15, your sexy, if you ever had any, is gone, 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 long gone, ran away, okay? Now look at you. You got a big gut. You got man boobs, you know, double chin. You look a hot mess. You got them hot dogs things on the back of your neck, them little rolls. I hate those things, looking like a pack of hot dogs. You have let yourself go. And you are not the dude, the stud, handsome body, whatever, that she got with. You know, you've been slacking. You've been eating garbage. You haven't been taking care of yourself. You haven't been exercising. And then when you have sex, you know, you're sitting up there huffing and puffing and sweating and shit like your heart beating on hard like you're going to die any second. You know, she's scared half to death that you're going to die on top of her or some shit and have a heart attack. So you need to take your ass to the gym and see your doctor about getting on a diet and get yourself in shape. You know, that just, just makes no sense. Especially a lot of you dudes are young. Like in your 30s, I'm walking around here with guts like an old man. Looks like it's a hot mess. Get your ass up and do something with yourself. Go to the gym. 24-hour fitness is everywhere in the country. There's no excuse. Where did I leave off? See, I'm talking so much shit, I forgot where I was. Okay, that's number 15. So let me go to 14. 14, you take her for granted. She feels taken for granted. Now, what does that mean? That means that she doesn't feel appreciated for the contributions. And it's like you just, you know, expect it to happen with no consideration for the sacrifices that she's making or what she's doing. And in these cases, a lot of women are just exhausted. You know, they just have too much work to do because they work a job all day. And then they come home to an environment where there's an unequal distribution of labor for the household chores, child care, and possibly even finances. She feels unsupported. And, you know, there's a lot of studies about this topic. And what most of them generally say is that women's sexual desire tends to decrease with the age, not only of the woman, but with the age of the relationship, even with young women. And so I thought, hmm. But you know, when you look at the, who did the studies, the studies are always done by men, and since men are dumb, they don't understand that when, as a relationship ages, that's not the factor. What the factor is, is that men get too comfortable. They stop doing the things and treating the woman the way that they did when they first got her, and the women start to get disappointed, exhausted, and feel tired. You know, they just, they get sick of how the men take them for granted, and how the men stop doing all the fun and exciting romantic things they did when they got, to, you know, when they first got together and uh, the relationship was new. Women want to continue at least some of that, and the guys that were already got you now don't have to do that anymore. And that's not how it is. So you end up with a woman who's looking at you the side eye and feeling very disappointed in the turn of the relationship. That's the trigger. It's not the age of the relationship. It's how men act as the relationship ages and how their behavior impacts the woman's sexuality. And I don't know why these men haven't figured that out. So I thought, wow, these people are dumb. Do I have to like go and help them do these studies? Oh, I just like, you know, they say if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. Okay, now let's move on to number 13, abandonment. This is a big one. A lot of people, both men and women, suffer from fear of abandonment. And in a situation like this, um, the main points that come into play in the abandonment is that you don't take her side. You don't support her. And case after case, there will be drama with your baby mama, drama with your ex-wife, drama with your mother, your sister, your family, something. It's some, some situation like that that's connected to you. You take the other people's side instead of your woman's side. You abandon her all by herself. It's like you guys, you and your team, your crew are bullies and you're just bullying her. And then you come home with her and you expect that, you know, she's going to be all romantic with your ass. You no, know, you know what you do? Take your ass back to where you was and all the people that you sided with, go fuck one of them. That's what you need to do. 
know, you thought it was so great and grand to be all on their side. And, but, you know, honey, I got to be neutral or, you know, uh, I don't want to say too much. You know, that's my sister, this and that, all this other stuff. But you let your sister talk to your woman. They're all kind of crazy. See, you don't deserve no pussy. You, I wouldn't sleep with you either. And y'all don't understand that. If you're going to be with your woman as a team and you want her to be on your, on your back, you best have hers. So you just leaving her alone for your women and your family and anybody else to attack her and you don't come to her defense and stand and make a firm stance against any attacks on your woman, the woman you love, then see, you just a punk. And then nobody want to fuck a punk. So you know, you set that dynamic emotion yourself. You did that. Number 12, she is got a bad case of sick of your shit-itis. She's sick of your shit. You've hurt her feelings in probably like a bunch of ways that you just are so cavalier about it. You don't even think about what you said or what you did and how it may have hurt her. You make these insensitive comments. You ignore her. You just generally be a jerk. And you show absolutely no remorse. And you tell her, well, you'd be seen being too sensitive. You know, it's no big deal this and that so you totally ignore the fact that you've hurt her and just brush it off but then you expect you know for her her uh, legs to be open for your ass you tripping you are seriously tripping you need to apologize and never do it again then you might get some booty but you know this this these behaviors you guys exhibit towards women and then you think that you're supposed to be rewarded for it with sexual with access to her body the same way you would if you treated her like she was special and important you're something your own drugs or something you tripping you tripping hard number 11 she has built up resentment from your refusal to listen now this happens like a woman will make, you know, I mean, she makes some complaints. She was like, you know, we never spend time together anymore. Um, you know, honey, I don't like it when you do this and that, you know, just makes too much work for me. Well, you know, why do you keep coming home so late? You never tell me where you are. I don't like that. You know, she's telling you different things that you have the opportunity to correct. She asks for change. She asks for help. She asks for problems to be addressed, things that's bothering her. But you ignore it. You know, you refuse to even listen. And if you listen, you half-ass listen. And then you tell her, you know, you, uh, you don't understand what the problem is and you just storm off and, you know, just ignore her. So every time you do that, though, she's getting further and further away from you emotionally. And you men who do that are the ones whose women just leave you, right? Just one day, she's just gone. And you be acting all surprised and be like, well, it was all of a sudden we were so happy. No, she'd been complaining and telling you what was wrong for like ever. And you just chose to ignore it. So, you know, this residual resentment that women have, you know, unless you're going to just nag you about it endlessly, which most don't, they're going to voice their complaint and then wait for you to see what you do about it. And y'all just choose to do nothing. So um, don't be shocked, you know, as this resentment builds. This is going to start with her not wanting to sleep with you and not wanting you to touch her. And then the next thing you know, she's going to be gone. And you would have done that to yourself. Okay, number 10, lack of non-sexual affection. I think, you know, as a good relationship ages, like I said, men stop making an effort to seduce the woman. You know, you only touch her when you want some ass. You need to do, you know, do stuff like that's more romantic and sensual, like hold her hand. You know, just walk up behind her if she's cooking and give her a back hug or something. Kiss her for no reason. You know, when she's sitting there, you guys are watching TV or whatever, you know, turn it and really focus on her. Stare into her eyes and smile and, and tell her how beautiful she is or something. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I'm just making this up off the top of my head, but... It's like, you know, and, and a good a thing that really works, too, is if you let her hear you say good things about her to other people, that is that is like that really warms a woman's heart because you're validating her in a way that means more than if you just said it to her. And, you know, like you pass each other in the household, you know, you could reach out and touch her, you know, rub her cheek or stroke her cheek or something, rub her hair, you know, do something. Don't touch her any parts that's sexual. Don't squeeze her boobs or pat her on the ass or something like that. You know, just, just some nice sensual, non-sexual touching that increases intimacy between you two. But it doesn't relate to sex. Can you do that, please? 
you know, you can like call her during the day, tell her you love her. Sit her in your lap when you come home from work and kiss on her and, and let her tell you about her day and hug her and stuff. I mean, there's a lot of opportunities that only take you like a, from a few seconds to five minutes to increase the emotional connection that you have with your woman. And this will go a long way toward increasing the bedroom activity. But y'all don't want to do it. You come in the house, you grunt at the woman, you rant and rave and talk about, you know, it's too noisy, where my food at, and all this old stuff. I mean, who you think want to sleep with you? Really? I mean, dudes, come on now. Number nine. See, as we get up the list, it's getting a little bit more, more deeper. Cheating. You cheating. Now, she knows you're sneaking around and cheating, but... Maybe she hasn't figured out how to, you know, really bring it up yet, but it's bothering her. She don't want to have sex with you. You're nasty. She don't know where your dick's been. You might have a disease that you'll give her, herpes or some shit. You know, or maybe she caught you red-handed. You know, she saw it with her own eyes, and, I mean, the heat, the, the pain went deep. You know, she's trying to deal with the hurt. And you think that because you said, oh, I'm sorry, you know, uh, it won't happen again, I broke up with her, whatever, whatever lies y'all be telling, you think that she's just going to forget about it and things are going to go back to normal, that your life is going to continue on as it was before your lying, cheating ass broke her heart. You have to take responsibility for the fact that you have deeply wounded this woman and whatever trust that she had in you before is damaged, is destroyed. I mean, she may get some of it back if you work really hard, but the relationship that you have will never be the same. She's never going to love you exactly the way she did before you broke her heart. She's never going to trust you as much either. And there's going to always be doubt in the back of her mind, no matter. I mean, you know, y'all need to think, is it, you know, tipping out like that? And fucking around with some bitch, is that really worth destroying the relationship you with a woman you claim to love? You need to think about this stuff more. Cause you know, you once you break a woman's heart like that, it is pretty much a wrap. She may still be there, but she's not gonna love you the same. Not like she did before you hurt her. Number eight, you have poor communication out of bed. Now you think about the majority of your relationship occurs outside the bedroom. But if you have a situation where, you know, it's always a whole bunch of back and forth and tension and conversations or, you know, jaws be tight or you guys are just straight up arguing, that kind of stuff is a killer to sex. Because if you think about it, you know, women are very auditory and we love to hear, we usually love to hear our man's voice. You know, this it's very sexy to us. We're attracted to his voice and we like the words. But, you know, if you're scaring her, you're yelling, you're making her cry, that's not going to result in hot bedroom activity. And if the conversation that you have with your woman outside the bedroom is not happening, then the body language won't be happening either. Okay, those two things are, are very connected. Number seven, you don't do anything to provide your woman with romance. <laughs> I don't know, dudes. I mean, I saw this guy out with his wife, and he had his Bluetooth on, and he was just like you know, picking up every call, and she mid-sentence, he'd interrupt her, and it was like really the saddest thing. She was just sitting there looking at him with the dismayed look on her face, and I saw them out in the lobby area, you know, waiting for their table, and she looked so excited because they were, you know, going on a date or whatever. But he ignored her almost the whole time with, you know, with his with his phone. And so I would suggest, guys, you know, if you went out with your lady, take off your Bluetooth. Turn your phone off. I mean, it, you can't spend an hour or two just devoting your time and attention totally to her. That's too much to ask. You know, don't let your relationships get stagnant. I, I mean, think about it. I mean, you gotta take, still take your woman out on dates like you used to. You know, book a couple of weekend getaways, just the two of you. I mean, if you got kids, you know, get rid of them little motherfuckers and get you a babysitter. Just the two of you go somewhere. Do you still flirt with your woman? Do you still wink at her and you know whistle at her or say, "Ooh, my wife, my that girl, whatever, is so fly. She's so fine," or you know, whatever you're gonna do. I mean, how do you do it? Do you, you know, try giving her some deep kisses for 30 seconds and longer and just hold her real tight and just kiss her just for no reason and then just pat her on the back and walk off? 
dad would just leave her like breathless and be like, well, damn. You know, but women like that kind of stuff. So, you know, you, you got a woman who's willing to, to cook you a nice dinner and put on a nice dress and some sexy lingerie or something and, you know, make things look exciting for you. Negro, please get off your lazy ass and do something to reciprocate. You know, but pay attention to your woman. Number six. I almost didn't put this on because you would think that this would be like a given, but obviously it's not. Poor hygiene. Men have poor hygiene. And um, a lot of y'all are just straight funky. You need to wash your ass. And when I say wash your ass, I don't mean just, you know, your whole body. I mean, seriously, your ass. Pull them cheeks apart and get up in there with the soap. And, you know, scrub in there those little folds. You got to get, you know, you got to clean that up. Um, wash your, and scrub, you scrub your nails too. That's very important. You know, wash your nuts. That under nut smell can be just putrid. That is just gross. And if you're, if you're not uh, circumcised, you make sure that you clean all that smegma out. That shit smells awful. And, um. You know, what's really was good is like have a bath sometimes. Sitting in some water will do wonders for all those areas on men. Because y'all, I don't know, y'all be just funky. It's just ridiculous. And, um, you know, make sure you brush your teeth and floss and shit. Go to the dentist. Make sure you don't have no bad teeth and no breath be all funky. I mean, these are all things that make women, you know, not want to be in the bed with you because you just are just gross. And so, you know, make sure that you stay stay on top of your hygiene and smell good for her and look good for her. And she might want to sleep with you. Number five. You, yo, okay, how do I put this? I guess I don't need to be delicate. You just ain't hitting it right. Let's just put it that way. You're just not hitting it right. You leave her unfulfilled. And what you have is a case of a woman who is most likely faking your or her orgasm just so that you will, you know, feel like you put in some work and feel good about your sex life. But um, in reality, love is only going to take your sex life so far. You know, think about this. You know, you, your woman needs sexual release just like you do. And actually, women have a higher sex drive than men because women can have, you know, four, five, ten orgasms for every one that a dude has. You know, if you know what you're doing, that's, that could be her sexual experience. So if you are not hitting it right and you're leaving your woman unfulfilled and she's faking it to save your ego, well, you have a problem. And you will also have a woman who really sees no benefit in sleeping with you. What for? Because there's nothing in it for her. So why should she? Okay, she may love you, like I said, but that's only going to take your sex life so far. At some point, she's going to get bored with that sacrificing herself for your pleasure shit. And then she's going to be like, mm, let me move on. Okay, number four, you are a one trick pony. What does that mean? That means your sex is boring. It's not that you maybe don't get the job done. I mean, she might get an orgasm at the end or something, but it's boring. She knows exactly what you're going to do. You're going to do the same positions like clockwork, the same foreplay movements, everything at the same length of time. It's exactly the same every time. Oh, my God. I'm bored just thinking about it. You know, there's so there's no excitement. There's nothing to anticipate. And... Uh, it's uh, why do you want to do this? It's like seeing the same movie every day. I mean, this might be cool every once in a while to rewatch a movie, but you know, every day, same shit every day. No. Emotional distance. This is number three. You have an emotional distance in your relationship. You guys forget that women's libido is linked to our hearts and our minds. So you know. The, the orgasm takes place first mentally. That's what happens with women. You got to stroke the mind before you stroke the behind. And you need to stay close to her. And, you know, like stay close to her emotionally by, by talking and being emotionally intimate and, and like there, physically available to her. If you don't do those things, you leave an opening that can be easily filled by other people. Now, they can be male or female. I mean, you know, whatever. But 
your relationship, you know, you need to be the one who's the most emotionally close to her, not somebody else. But, you know, again, if you ignore her, you know, you ignore your woman repeatedly like that, basically what you're doing is teaching her how to live without you. So then leaving you becomes a snap because you weren't really there in the first place. You put everybody and everything else before her. And, uh, you know, what's the point? Number two. Now, this is the point, like I said, this is the only one on here that is not the male's fault. These are medical and physical reasons. Like, you know, maybe she just had a baby. Uh, maybe she just developed some chronic illness and needs medical medication for it that's affecting her libido. Because uh, some medications for depression and a blood, high blood pressure will affect that. You know, perhaps she's starting to go through menopause and going through some hormonal shifts. Maybe she has some kind of infection in her body and she just feels really sick and, and, you know, hasn't really figured it out yet. There's a lot of reasons, uh, physical, uh, basically medical-based reasons why people's uh, sex drive is impacted. Uh, But, you know, some medical tests and visits to a physician should, you know, at least get you on the path to figuring it out. It may not be the solution. You may have to kind of, you know, go through some changes to really find a solution for it and uh, and address it that way. But um, that is the only reason on this list that is not in the under the hands of the male's responsibility. And then reason number one why your woman won't sleep with you is she's dealt with your bullshit long enough and she's getting her needs met met somewhere else. And while she's, you know, thinking about somebody else, maybe she's moved on emotionally and sexually, but just still there physically while she tries to figure out how to get away from your ass. I mean, there's all kind of, you know, ways to think about that. But, um... At, if she's had to deal with the other 24 things on this list other than the medical things at some point she will be sick of you and the relationship will come to a screeching halt and then everything will be over but you know the barometer of it uh, is the se- lack of sexual interest and if that is the situation you guys I suggest you get your act together and figure it out because you need to do more to keep the relationship hot you know, if your sex life has fallen off, you need to, like, pay attention to that and figure out why. You need to make your woman feel you, feel your presence, and feel that you got her back. I mean, how can you have a relationship with a woman and she, you always leave her by herself? You run around with your friends and doing all this other stuff, and you don't really spend time with her. Women need your time. They need your attention. They need your affection. They need you to take care of them emotionally and to feel supported and protected by you. And the only way that's going to happen is if you are there. You've got to be there mentally, and you've got to be there physically, and you've got to bring there, be there emotionally, and you need to bring your A game. You want to keep your woman happy and keep your relationship sexy? That's what you need to do. Now, if you are not prepared to do those things, you know, you don't want to meet her needs. Or I'm talking about her needs, not the needs that you assume she has, but her real needs. You don't want to do that. Then you have to accept that what you're experiencing, you know, the lack of sexual interest on her part, that's your fault. Because sex for women is an expression of the love they have for you. You know, if she's in a relationship with you and she loves you, when she has sex, that's how she's telling you that she loves you. So if you're not loving her in a way that she can feel it, don't be surprised to hear, no, I don't want to. And you might hear that a lot, but that means that you're doing something wrong and you need to fix it. Because if you have a woman that really feels loved and cared for, dude, she will be all over you and you will be like, wait, baby, I need time off. I got to rest. I need to rest tonight. That's what will, that's what your sex life would be like if you are doing things right with your woman. All right? So I hope that this answer, even though it's long and a lot longer, I'm sure, than this young man intended, um, I think it is a very thorough answer. It provides uh, you and ladies, too, with a lot of acceptance and understanding of the emotional ties that women have to their men and sexual the sexuality. I mean, it's all t- works together. 
and you can't have one without the other. So you want the best sex life you can have possible with your woman, you need to address these 24 issues that I just presented to you. My name is Deborah Cooper. I am the advice columnist on survivingdating.com and askaskheartbeat.com. Have another video for you in a couple of days. You guys have a happy Thanksgiving. I'll see you soon.